Okay, I've mentioned these quite a few times in the preceding videos, but it's now time to talk about the different exposure modes your camera uses to arrive at a decent exposure. This video is part of my Technical Fundamentals course, a complete nuts and bolts beginner's guide to the technical sides of photography. I'm adding to it every single week, so subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss anything, like if you like what I'm doing, stick a comment below if I haven't answered a question, and there'll always be a full transcript of this video at my blog over on photosmudger.com. Right now though, let's get stuck into different exposure modes. Now you will have seen on your camera letters like A, S, M, P, maybe some little pictures of things happening. Those are your exposure modes. All they are, are different ways that your camera arrives at an exposure. So a set of aperture, shutter speed and ISO that gives you an exposure. Just different ways of arriving at them that give priority and an emphasis to different aspects of the exposure. Now starting with the simplest, program mode, or P as it will be on your dial. This can best be thought of as fully automatic. If you set the camera to this mode, the camera will choose the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO. You can just point and shoot. Now of course, the biggest plus with this is you don't have to think about the exposure. You can just concentrate on capturing the right moment, getting the right shot. The drawback obviously is that you can't choose the exposure and by now, having learnt what effect the different aspects of exposure have, you probably are going to want to have some control over at least one of those three aspects, if not all three aspects. So program mode may not be for you. In truth, I have hardly ever used program mode in my 20 plus years of seriously taking photographs. For one thing, it didn't exist on cameras when I first started, believe it or not, it was very, very rare, but I learned to shoot in other automatic modes, such as aperture priority, which we're coming to in a bit, and professionally speaking, I use manual mode probably more than 95% of the time. The good thing about program mode is you do often have some control. Most cameras will let you use what's called program shift, whereby you switch to program mode and it'll give you a set exposure, let's say f8, 125th of a second at ISO 100, but as you turn either of the dials or press buttons on your camera, you can shift those exposure values. What it will do is it'll give you the equivalent exposure, but change some of the values. So it might then shift you to f5.6, but will put another stop in the shutter speed. It'll make it 1 to 50th of a second, but keep the ISO the same. Or it might be that you can you know, select the ISO and it'll work out the other two. Program modes differ a bit from camera to camera, but program mode, or P, is best thought of as fully automatic with all the advantages and disadvantages that go with giving the camera full control. The next exposure mode is aperture priority, which you'll find as A or occasionally AV on your dial. What this does is it lets you choose an aperture and then the camera will choose an appropriate shutter speed. You usually also choose the ISO, but of course you can vary that from shot to shot. This is the automatic mode that I tend to use, mostly because it's what was around back when I started photography. For boring technical reasons I won't go into, it was much easier to create an automatic mode that was aperture biased rather than shutter biased, and so that's what I grew up using before I properly learned manual mode. It's what I still use very, very occasionally if I'm in situations with rapidly changing light where I may not remember to change my exposure manual mode quick enough to account for the rapid changes. Aperture priority gives me that little bit of safety net that I know that even if the exposure is a little bit off, it won't be that far off. So aperture priority is actually a very good, reliable, automatic exposure mode to use. The next automatic exposure mode is shutter priority. This is sometimes called S or occasionally TV. TV meaning time value, very old fashioned way of saying shutter value. You can probably guess that what this does is the same as aperture priority, but with shutter. So rather than choose the aperture and let the camera choose the shutter speed, you choose the shutter speed and the camera will choose an appropriate aperture matched to the ISO you've chosen. It's as simple as that. As I say, I never really use this very much because it wasn't around when I first started and if I want to choose a shutter speed, I'll just switch to manual mode. Which brings me to the meat and two veg of the entire subject, manual mode. Now obviously I've mentioned this several times already in the course of these videos, that if you want to learn how exposures work and the effect that each part of the exposure triangle has, manual mode is by far the best way, okay? Not only does it give you that fabulous learning feedback, but of course it gives you complete control. You're not relinquishing any part of the calculation to the camera. Manual mode means of course just that, fully manual. You choose the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO. 
Now, the positive side of this, as I say, is you have complete creative control. You can choose exactly what exposure you want, irrespective of what the camera's meter might be telling you. you know, we've talked previously about exposure compensation, how exposure meters can be fooled. The downside to this is that, of course, it's actually quite easy in manual mode to get an exposure very, very wrong if you don't adapt to the situations as they may be changing. You know, if you go from inside with a certain amount of light to outside and don't adjust your exposure accordingly, you're going to get a very, very overexposed image and vice versa if you go from outside to inside. So the potential for error is very, very large, but the potential for control is even greater. Now those are the four standard exposure modes that you should find on most decent cameras. Program, aperture priority, shutter priority, and good old manual. Now, on some cameras, particularly consumer cameras, you may find a whole raft of other modes. You might find things called intelligent auto, you might have a big green button, or you might have lots of funny little pictures of flowers, mountains, people running, all that sort of thing. All you need to know about all of these is you just don't touch them. It's as simple as that. Okay? If you're a serious photographer, particularly for trying to learn about how these things work, don't touch those modes with a barge pole. They are not going to help. All right, that's not very fair, is it? I at least ought to tell you what they are and what they do. Well, things like intelligent auto and green mode are basically kind of what they say. They're fully automatic modes. The camera takes complete control over it. It's similar in a way to program mode, except that program mode often lets you, say, choose an ISO and often lets you shift the exposure, as I mentioned earlier. A green mode won't let you do a thing. A green mode will be totally point and shoot. So, as I say, if we're trying to learn how exposure works and what the different facets of exposure do, green mode is not going to help. Those funny little pictures, the picturegrams of, say, the running man, the mountain, etc., those also can be totally ignored. What they are are, I suppose you'd call them subject-specific exposure modes. So if you want to go and shoot a sports picture, you switch to the running man icon and you'll get a perfect sports picture. If you want to shoot a perfect close-up picture, you switch to the flower icon and so on and so on. Now, of course, the problem with that is, who's to say what is a perfect sports picture or a perfect macro close-up picture, okay? What these modes really are is automatic modes whereby that vast accumulation of data we've talked about before that's gathered in that lab in Tokyo where they put together millions of exposures over the years, they've worked out the sort of exposures that favour a typical sports photograph or close-up photograph and then created biased sort of automatic exposure sets that work within that. So obviously if you go for a sports mode, let's say, it's going to prioritise giving you a far shutter speed to freeze motion. Now that's great, assuming that's the shot you want to take. Um, who says sports photos always have to be pin sharp and frozen? Okay, that's not a guarantee. And obviously you are giving full control to the camera when you use any of these picture modes. I can say absolutely hand on heart, in 20 plus years of taking photographs, I have never once used one of those picture modes. Okay, you absolutely don't need them. If your camera's got them, don't let me see you turning the dial around to them. Now, one automated feature that I don't get quite so worked up about is a relatively recent invention called Auto ISO. Now this is relatively recent because of course when you think about it it can only exist in the digital world. There's no way you could ever have done this with film because each roll of film was a fixed ISO. When you switch your camera to Auto ISO what happens is if you're in manual mode uh, you select your aperture and your shutter speed as you wish and then the camera will simply alter the ISO to get the correct exposure to match that aperture and shutter speed you've chosen. Okay, so irrespective of how noisy the image may get from a high ISO, it will just adjust it to fit and you can lock in an aperture and shutter speed combination you like and let the camera think about the ISO. Very handy. In aperture priority mode, it's even cleverer. You can set the aperture you're after, but then you can also go into one of your menus and you can tell the camera not to go below a certain shutter speed and to adjust the ISO accordingly. So let's say you're covering a sporting event, as I've had to do hundreds of times, and the light is changing very rapidly as people move around a field where they're playing or in, indoors in a sports hall. And because of that, I'm in an automatic exposure mode because I want to be able to you know, have a little bit of a safety net as regards exposure. So I've picked my aperture, but I don't want a slow shutter speed. I don't want it to suddenly drop to a slower speed. So I set a minimum shutter speed of, let's say, 1 500th of a second, and then I turn auto ISO on and the camera just dials in the ISO as required. 
you can sometimes with this also set an upper limit if you don't want the ISO to basically get too noisy, but I've never really worried about that too much. If of course the exposure can't go past the upper limit, let's say you know, you've know you got to the upper limit and it's still too dark, you'll simply have an underexposed image. That's just tough luck. You'll probably try and shoot in a brighter area. But auto ISO can be a very, very handy new little feature. I use it quite a lot of the time. Okay, that is in a nutshell all you need to know about exposure modes. As I say, personally, I use aperture priority a handful of the time if I'm in very varied changing lighting situations, but 95% of the time plus, I'm in manual mode because I want full control, I'm in charge of what I'm doing, I want to give priority to certain areas of the frame and certain creative looks, I don't want the camera making those decisions for me. And don't let me ever see you using those silly little picture modes. Right, that's all you need to know about exposure modes. Next week I'm going to be wrapping up the exposure section of the course before we move on to other aspects of photography. As always, subscribe so you get notifications, hit like if you like what I'm doing, stick some comments below if you want any questions answered. Otherwise, have fun and I'll see you next week.